that has maybe prompted you to want to run. Um, so kind of talk a little bit about maybe why you're running and how you think that your prior experience is going to help you be successful in this position. So I just start with you. Excellent. I'm Brandon Rosner, and my wife Karen and I live about two miles east of here in Sunset in Deer Path and Waukesha. Uh, when my wife and I were deciding where she should go about setting up her family practice clinic, we thought Waukesha would be a great area. We've lived here and uh, I've been here since 98. I went to the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Karen went to Marquette and then the Medical College. We have a two-year-old daughter, Evelyn, and another on the way in a few weeks. So we made uh, Waukesha our home and she's establishing a family practice clinic here. Uh, I decided to get in the race when the current representative decided he wasn't going to run. And uh, I, I saw that there were a few folks that had been elected or were elected officials and thought we needed some private sector experience to help with the folks in Madison and represent Waukesha going forward. I'm in the private sector myself. I work at Humana, healthcare insurance company on the north side of Waukesha. And I've been in healthcare and IT for the last 10 years. I worked for one year for Governor Walker in Madison doing healthcare policy. And it came at a critical time when there were some big decisions related to um, health care exchange and Medicaid expansion. Uh, both of those decisions I strongly supported the governor on, even though they were very unpopular at the time. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the president, I'm the president of the MSOE Alumni Board. Uh, the Milwaukee School of Engineering has a strong presence of alum, business owners in Waukesha, and I've been able to work a lot with those folks over the past few years. Um, so I'll have a little more time to talk more about myself and some of the other questions, but that's just a little background. Um, have enjoyed getting to meet folks uh, going door to door, and we'll have more time to expand on some of the issues. Great, thanks. Scott? Yeah, I was just curious, Brandon, uh, if you were here in 90... 19... Is this a Q&A, or is this no, a... No. I didn't know the final thing that we agreed on was more of a, let's introduce yeah. ourselves if we want to have a q and I think, you know, that was not the format we agreed to, yeah. so we're if we want to... we keep this to intros at this yeah. point, so... I mean, we, I think we all signed a clean campaign pledge about promoting ourselves and, you know, we want to get into the Q&As, you know, we can set up a form to do that. That wasn't what I was anticipating this morning. All right. All right. Sure. Scott, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, in 1998, uh, Kathleen Cummings and I campaigned against one, one another for representation on the uh, ninth District in the city of Waukesha. And, uh, I remember it well. <laughs> uh, she, she was going down one side of the street, I was going down the other side of the street. Uh, very often we, uh, we were crossing paths in that election. Uh, but I've been in this uh, community since 1995, and uh, I've lived and worked and served here uh, for the last 19 years in a variety of different locations and different capacities. Uh, people ask, well, I was talking to Tom uh, earlier, and he says, why do you want to do this? I said, well, it's kind of in my blood. I was elected uh, class president of my fourth grade class, uh, class president of my senior class. Uh, in 1996, I ran for the state senate, uh, well, actually, in uh, college I ran for student association president. In 19, 1996 I was a uh, candidate for state senate here in Waukesha. And uh, in 1998 I got elected to the city council. 98 I had my first daughter and in 2001 we were expecting our second daughter and I decided to hang politics up for the time being and concentrate on being a good dad. Uh, now my oldest is 15 learning how to drive and my youngest is 12 going on 22. Great kids, I love them dearly. Um, but I was inspired four years ago when Governor Walker unveiled the expression or the slogan, Wisconsin is open for business. And uh, I realized at that time that I needed to do my part to help in that effort. And here we are four years later. Uh, this seat opens up uh, in the district that I have lived for so long. And I know I can contribute and I know I can make a difference. Great. Thank you. My name is Aaron Perry. I'm an alderman here in the city of Waukesha. I serve on the southwest side. Uh, and some neighborhoods there. I was elected last year in 2013. Uh, my wife and I moved uh, to Waukesha here in 2009. I have two sons, uh, ages <coughs> one and two, uh, and we have a girl on the way in September, so we have a very active house. Um, the reason I'm running is I would like to take the level of connectedness that I've had with the community here and my knowledge now in the public sector combined with my knowledge in the private sector and I believe that's scalable to the assembly level. I think having that level of connectedness brings more local control to the area, and it brings uh, a better economic outlook, especially when it comes to jobs to the area. Uh, I've got the trust of the voters in my district, as well as the trust of uh, 
five other council members as well as the mayor of Waukesha who all have publicly endorsed me. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vince Travato. I'm a third generation Waukesha resident. I graduated from Waukesha West High School in 2000, where I was president of the Young Republicans Club at that time. Uh, involved at the University of Wisconsin Madison, where I graduated with a degree in history and international studies. Um, interned for a while in Governor Walker's office when he was a state assemblyman at that time uh, in College Republicans. Uh, since then, I have been I've worked up at the Capitol for several years doing policy work. Was there during Act 10 uh, several years ago. Um, worked with the International Republican Institute overseas in South Sudan, which was a very interesting experience. And I would say that I'm guided by policy, I'm guided by a, a passion for certain That's why I'm in race. My name is Joe Bansky. I moved to this area after coaching at Waukesha South High School for nine years. My wife and I were about to have our first child back in 2004, and getting to know the families before I moved into the area just offered me a guidance that I knew this is where I wanted to live. Uh, I took four years off after my first child was born to help raise my kids, get them a little out of diapers there. Uh, otherwise, my wife would have choked me if I said, honey, I'll be at Waukesha South for three and a half months. And I got back involved in the community through Fox River Church. That process has gone from uh, very uh, basic help to now I'm a director of their upward sports program if you're familiar with it. Uh, through working with our families, my campaign is built on focusing on our families, things that I see that are tearing them apart. Uh, things like common core education. My wife's a mechanical engineer who went back, got a master's in math, and is now one of the coordinators in uh, Monaco High School helping start a charter school. So we look at those standards as a family and talk about that so that the policies that I'm promoting have some basis in that. Uh, my reason for seeking out this office uh, comes from uh, the dialogue that I think needs to happen in Madison. Uh, things about looking at heroin addiction. There isn't a week goes by that I don't meet a family who knows or has a child die from heroin. Is something that we need to really get strongly addressed. Uh, it is just as critical as things like uh, drop drive on uh, along those lines. Uh, so I'm hoping to make a difference and bring a voice uh, that represents the community because I'm involved in the community. I know the families that live here and work here, and we're banging on to serve them again. And again. So, Good morning, and thank you for having all the candidates here today, Tammy. Yep. It's quite an opportunity to meet all of you. Some of you I've met over the past several years coming to these Southside businesses, but uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Kathleen Cummings. I have been a county board supervisor since 1999, and uh, a city of Waukesha, all the women's court since, 19, since 2001. I have served in both capacities for the last 13 years. That is my experience. That is my work experience. I've known for the last 13 years what the left and the right hand are doing on most times. Uh, I've worked to get things done during that time. And uh, since, this is a bi since this is a big bibliography, I'm a mother of three. I was mother of the bride on May the 3rd. And um, my uh, son is a graduate from MSOE. And I have a son that has autism who is still as close with us. My experience will uh, take us to the next level to look for reduce in taxes, promote jobs, and uh, streamline the government. Because I do believe that in Waukesha County we use uh, main government principles and that we should use those in our medicine. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm going to just open up. Does anyone have a question they want to start out with? Okay. Go ahead, John. Um, how do you, uh, uh, how do you uh, see um, the um, Coming debate uh, regarding financing uh, for the uh, opposed uh, Bucks Arena, uh, particularly the possibility of public financing. Kathleen, we'll start with you and we'll just kind of work the other way down. Well, that's a very good question. Uh, at the county board, we've already looked at that. Back at the county board in December of 2013, the county board of supervisors uh, voted on a resolution, it was unanimous that even before the task force, we did not want to have any part of adding extra tax to build the stadium. So I'm already on record by my vote saying I do not support it. Joe? Uh, I would echo Kathleen's other than I don't serve on the counter board. Uh, 
the temperature of the people when I knock on doors is not for new taxes. It is for finding ways to reduce spending. And, and this is an issue that is very critical, and, and I don't believe that you'd see uh, much support at all from any of the Republicans on the uh, tax base there. Okay. Like Kathy and Joe, I'm very opposed to public financing for the Bradley Center's uh, replacement. I think that we need to look at ways to reduce um, government spending um, and, and reduce our tax burden. Uh, I've made it clear from the get-go that I don't I don't support this. Um, I even had the opportunity to uh, be interviewed by Channel 4 um, to make sure that people knew that as well. And the reason being that I explained it to Todd Murray during that interview was the number that they're looking for, we can actually kind of set a precedent in the country and in, in the NBA or else maybe in other leagues that the amount of money they're looking for can be found privately. It certainly is still a lot, but they're not looking for $2 billion. Uh, they're looking for somewhere around the three to $400 million range, which going to a public financing option immediately when that's the amount of money that you need sets a very, very poor precedent. That if we here in Milwaukee can, if they can get that done without public financing, hopefully other markets that are similar size can do the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, the arena question illustrates where leadership com comes into play. Uh, I have seen nothing that supports that there is an economic advantage to Waukesha County for Waukesha County to be involved in publicly financing the arena. Now, if a public financing option should be pursued, it should be restricted to Milwaukee County alone and not Waukesha County. But more importantly, we want to keep the bucks. So how do we bring people to the table? And I think if you look at my credentials over a period of time, I've shown leadership in terms of the ability to bring people to the table to get things done. So it's fine that we stake out positions, but really how do we solve the problem? And I believe private financing is the route to go, and I believe we can do it, and I can help in bringing that leadership and making that happen. I remember in 1998, my dad brought me out to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is a kind of a neat area to go camping, and we heard a saying from this guy that said, oh, the poor millionaires are getting kicked out by all the billionaires in Jackson Hole. And when I saw that a couple billionaires bought the bucks, um, you know, that <coughs> spoke enough that there doesn't need to be public financing. But even prior to that, in April, I was running radio ads for my campaign indicating a strong stance on no taxes. Early May, I met with the Waukesha Freeman Editorial Board, taking a strong stance against the Bradley Center tax. And then in late May, I ran a column on the Freeman indicating that I don't support the Bradley Center tax. So my position's been pretty clear. I love the Bucks, like Scott, and go to games. We'll love to see them stay. Uh, taxing Waukesha residents isn't the answer. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to throw a question out here. Um, one of the, the big issues facing, obviously, City of Waukesha is still our water issue. Um, so if you want to just share what your thoughts and feelings are in regards to whether you support the application for Lake Michigan water, or you don't support, or feel maybe things need to go in a different direction. So we'll start with you, Brandon, on that question. Yeah, I think any way that there's um, the availability for the State Department of Natural Resources to get involved and aid the City of Waukesha in this water application process, that's great. Ultimately, I believe it's a local issue. For as long as I've been listening to a talk radio in Waukesha in the area, I've, I've heard about the water issue and I haven't heard a lot of solutions. So from a state perspective, you know, other than aiding the DNR uh, to allow the city to proceed in that process, that's where I would come down on it. But I think. Um, the city needs to lead. I know Mayor Riley has gone out to D.C. to meet with our congressman to talk about the issue, and I would support any way that the city can lead on the issue. I'm in favor of the Lake Michigan uh, application. I support it. Uh, I would also be in favor of getting the EPA off of our backs. Uh, I support the application as well. Um, and and look, we should be clear, um, the water application as far as really for this district, there is no larger issue than that. If that application is delayed or denied, there's no other issue that's going to be more important than, than clean water for businesses as well as residents. Um, there is a role for this assemblyman um, in aiding this, mainly from a timeliness standpoint. I've had, because it's such a large issue, I've had a lot of communication with Dan Kutniak uh, our water utility manager, who is really the, the brains behind this application. Without him, um, we might be in some trouble. 
I met with him as recently as this week to clarify what my role would be um, so that when the election happens, we can hit the ground running. Uh, like the other three over here, I also am in favor of the application. Um, to me, this is about local control, and I think that that's an important element on a number of issues across the board. So for me, um, trying to retain a measure of that local control, whether it comes to our schools, whether it comes to our water, um, that will be a priority as a state assembly. This topic is obviously no stranger. I served for four years in the town of Waukesha, and the water service area part of the application process was critically uh, discussed and evaluated in the town. I support the application, and I think it is the best hope that we have in the city to solve the problem without creating uh, a, a mutiny amongst neighbors uh, over a fight of the most precious resource, our water. And so I, I'm hopeful that they're able to get that done. Eric Ebersberger and I at the DNR have talked numerous times about the details of the application. I think they've got a road ahead of them that is going to be needed to have a spokesperson to help smooth out some of those political roughness, especially when it gets to the validation of the application amongst the states of the Great Lakes. Thank you. Um, yes, we've been wrestling with this since I came to the Common Council. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to actually vote on this. It took me a while to actually make the decision to support it because there was a lot of details that I needed to understand. But having done so, um, it is, I support the Lake Michigan uh, application. It's absolutely critical and necessary for Waukesha County and its growth because if we don't have the water, uh, we are not open for business. We need to have the water in Waukesha County, so that in the city of Waukesha and with Waukesha being the county seat, we take the lead and we need to Help. I would do everything to continue the road moving forward. And yes, I'm nervous and you think I'd be used to this, but I, but, uh, I support it. I will work as an assemblyman to continue to push it forward. But uh, there will be a time when it will be up to the five the, the states that surround the Great Lakes. And uh, it all starts with a conversation as we move forward. But we, it's absolutely necessary to be open for business here in Waukesha County to get that Great Lakes thing. Um, Shake out my nerves. I'll open up the, if there's a question. We have one from one of our Twitter followers. He wants to know how important are the state school district or the area school districts to you and what as an assemblyman or woman could you do to help support school districts? Go ahead Kathleen. I heard part of it. How important are school districts to you, and what could you do as Assemblywoman to support them? Good question. Um, first of all, I'd have to identify the, 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 I'd have to identify the reason why you wouldn't want to have them. I'd have to just, it starts with a conversation. It, it, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked at this issue, but it starts with a conversation to say, okay, why did we start with the school districts? What would be the benefit of not having it? It starts with a conversation. You just don't do something. It starts with a conversation. And how you would support it is exactly that. Start with the conversation and then work to ways to make it better. And maybe use some of those lean government principles. I'm sure there's an, there would be a, um, an, uh, a niche for that. Because there is duplications when you have several school districts right with each other. Our school districts are critical to our future. It's one of the, when you talk about the common core issues and the, the fact that we were taking away uh, control of our local school boards and our school districts, that's actually stripping you of your right to make a difference in your school, in your child's life. The best source to make a difference in education is to put control and get people to take ownership. As you went around the room and introduced yourself, you had a sense of humor, you had a sense of gravitas to who you are and what you do, and in your business you take ownership of the work product that you deliver. What we need to do is stand up for our school districts, our teachers, our administrators, and our school boards, and get them, the good people that are in those schools, to take ownership of their product. And sending it off to somewhere else is a, the poorest decision you could possibly make. Um, what I think, in answering the second part of the question, what I think I can do about that is through my network. I know two superintendents in the district uh, quite well because they've employed my wife over the years. Uh, 
what I think I can do is help promote the good work that they do, right? give them a positive face in the community, right? instead of some of the negativity that's come through some of the actions of the minority voices that went to Madison. Uh, I can tell you that there is a strong, silent majority in the high schools here that hid out underneath their desks, that didn't answer their door when unions came calling, because these people came from my home and had barbecues. I hear the stories. I understand where they're at. We have great schools doing great work. We need to tune out the minority that are loud and focus in on this majority and pick them up and promote them so that they take ownership and get the work. I think that we're very blessed in Waukesha, Wanago, to have two outstanding school districts in this district. Um, I think that we need to do everything that we can to continue to promote our public schools. I come from a family of teachers. My mom's a teacher. My uh, sister-in-law's a teacher. My sister's a teacher. They're all Republican teachers, but at the same time, they're, <laughs> they're still public school teachers. And I, I think that it's really important um, that we continue our dialogue, though I do support school choice and vouchers. Um, I also don't believe necessarily that um, school choice and vouchers are always the answer in Waukesha specifically. I think we've got outstanding school district here. Um, working closely with the superintendents of this district would be a priority for me as an elected representative, um, making sure that, that, that those lines of communication are open. I agree with a lot of what's been said, uh, and I, I think most candidates, if not all of us, will uh, agree with school choice. And I think the two answers to your question, first off, thank you for asking a question from Twitter. Uh, Twitter is one of the ways I stay connected with residents, so it's nice to see them have a voice as well. Um, but I think from an education standpoint, educating uh, people that so that they embrace Act 10 and the control that was given to them. Um, and part of that, I think, comes with being positive. And of course, we support school choice, but we also need to be positive in our talk about school districts and public education. I can vouch for the quality of teachers we have here in Waukesha because Vince is mother was my daughter's fourth grade teacher. She did an excellent <laughs> job. Uh, but really it is about empowering teachers. Um, I think sometimes uh, the activities of DPI run contrary to what the teachers want to do in the classroom. Uh, the reason we hire competent professionals is so that they can do their job. And the last thing we need is bureaucracy getting them in the way of competent professionals doing their job. So I think as an, a state assembly person, uh, that's our job as your representatives is to make sure that the DPI doesn't muddy things up too much, that we get bureaucracy out of the way and let the teachers do their work. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, you, know, you can look at the funding situation for school districts. There was a reduction this last year in state aid. Uh, we always have to be mindful of an appropriate level of funding for school districts. Uh, I think Act 10 was a huge step in the right direction. Uh, it gave school districts flexibility and uh, at the same time, there was a reduction in state aid. So we have to be mindful of how much uh, we're supporting uh, school districts throughout the state. I really uh, approach the question from two perspectives. One is local control, and the second is a jobs uh, issue. When I talk to folks uh, that are supporting me that have small businesses in the area that have job openings that 18 and 19-year-old high school graduates could step right into, they say, uh, we want our schools to educate people so they can step into these jobs. Uh, Generac, some of the executives at Generac are supportive of my campaign. They say, we have jobs we can't fill. Dave Ball at the road at Weldall Manufacturing, J.R. Kramer at Wisconsin Metalworks, all good job creators in Waukesha that I've sat down and talked with and they say, we want our uh, junior and senior high school programs to teach technical math so these guys can step right in, guys and girls right out of college and fill these good paying jobs. So that's how I look at it, is how can we tweak the system so that people are uh, not only skilled and ready to go to college, but also skilled and ready to go to the workplace if they don't want to go to college. And second, just local control. Uh, I've been a long-standing uh, opponent of Common Core and some of those standards. If you read the Journal Sentinel headline this morning, Governor Walker came out last night as well with strong opposition to that. And it, that's a local control issue. When I go door to door and parents bring out the Common Core uh, influenced homework, I, I'm an, I studied MSOE, I can't figure it out. So I think we need to give our uh, local school districts the control to set their own standards in coordination with some state standards. Anyone have a question at this point they want to ask? <coughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead. <coughs> Just a question about the uh, Government Accountability Board. Do you have specific views on that, that it should be tweaked, changed, altered, or 
remain the same. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad to start. I mean, it's in the news recently because Governor Walker just appointed a new member of the GAB. Uh, when the GAB was set up a few years ago, it was meant to help reform some of the campaign finance laws, and it's, it's no further along as we follow through the recall process, some of the debacles through it, but even the process of how a member goes through the vetting. Uh, the, the most recent appointee was pretty much a liberal judge, and that was the best option that Governor Walker had to appoint to the board because of the process. So it needs to be reformed. We can talk a lot more in detail, but um, it's a mess, frankly. Uh, Monday, we have to all file our campaign finance reports. Our treasurers and I have spent hours doing this. Uh, we need to publicly disclose those things, but the process is just a mess. So there's a lot of reform that needs to be done. We're glad to talk specifics after the forum if you want to know more. That's it. Yeah, I agree with what Brandon said. Uh, I think that the irony here is that it was the Republican legislature that passed the most recent reforms. That's the irony. Uh, and Republicans are like, hey, wait a minute. What's going on? So. Yeah, I, I think there's always going to be problems with the Governmental Accountability Board. The, the minority party, so to speak, doesn't have the say, and even when they ha have the majority, they make the rule changes, they're still not happy with the rules. Uh, I don't know what the solution is, quite frankly. Uh, I'd be interested in getting your input on some ideas. Uh, it is a mess, and uh, I, I'd like to tweak it, I'd like to fix it, but gee, where do you, where do you, where do you unwind that thing? How do you how do you begin to structure it in a way that everybody's going to consider it fair? I, I guess I, I agree with with what's been said as well as I think it definitely serves a role. It can serve a role when done right. Um, being that it's a, a newer program, it's something that still needs some ironing out, which can sometimes happen in government, unfortunately, uh, causes some frustration. But when done correctly uh, by the right people, I see it serving a good. Role. Uh, unfortunately, the Government Accountability Board has quite a long track record of not being um, accountable, ironically. <laughs> so I think that, I think that you know, one of the things that we need to look at is ways to um, make government more responsive, to make government uh, smaller, and I think that the Government Accountability Board is a good place to start. Uh, I will agree with everybody. I think you'll hear six out of six here that believes that the Government Accountability Board is uh, severely broken and has been made the point about it not being very accountable something that needs to be uh, peeled back and take a look at really what was its intent because its intent was good and how did the execution of that intent get so off track and, and can you recreate it in a way that that doesn't happen. And I'm number six and it's all been said so I agree with what all the other five candidates have said. It, you know, whenever you start a new piece of legislation sometimes there's unintended consequences and then you look at it again and you revisit it and you make it better and that's what I'm looking for. Any other questions? Um, I'm going to throw out one more question and then we'll kind of do some closing remarks. Um, the Waukesha West Bypass has been in the planning stages for 50 years. Um, we want to know, is this something you support and how do you think you can maybe help you know, keep this project moving along um, and make sure that it does actually get a, a completed at length? We've done, uh, thank you, uh, as a county board supervisor and an alderman, we have done that for a period of time. It's been on the books since I moved to Waukesha because it's been on the books for like 50 years. Having said that, it's very critical now. The state doesn't get in the way. Waukesha County has done everything in their part. We have now picked out the, no pun intended, the road we're going to take. But uh, it's critical that the state doesn't put it on the back burner again, that there's not funding for it. We need to move forward. It's a plan that's been in place for the last 50 years. We've got everybody to agree we need to move forward because then that also uh, leads to the governor's uh, 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 governor's point of Wisconsin's open for business. With the bypass, Waukesha and Waukesha County is open for business. It will be the economic engine to the city of Waukesha and Waukesha County. That's why we have to keep moving it forward. Uh, in the town of Waukesha, we as a board opposed the preferred route that the county has been working to an ends to. Uh, we did that over a concern to the recharge area of the shallow aquifer that aligns on the south side of Sunset and Merrill Hills Road, that, that little area, that conservancy there. We found it ironic that the county took a position of creating an area of conservancy and very strongly uh, promoted and spent money in that area to preserve that and protect it and now it's okay to plow a road through there, and not just any, but a four-lane road. 
as you go through the district where the footprint would most impact, uh, there is very powerful majority opposition to a four-lane road. And the bypass portion that I have supported since 2009 has been a two-lane improved roadway where we can address the safety issues of the road, including Madison, where there's a blog point, by changing some of the uh, pitch of the road and putting a stop line and details along the route like that. These aren't just my opinions. I actually sat with a traffic engineer who handled the traffic study on Highway 83 project and got real information about what's going on and how we can address the, the community's impact as well as the need to fix the road uh, that's there, uh, including sitting down with the Waukesha Environmental Action League to understand really what their position was. Initially, they had a no-build period uh, position. If you talk to them today, uh, they have moved off of that to a no-build improve. And some of that has just been logic and common sense they've shared with them about it. you're not going to see a no bill, something's happening. Let's talk really about what the community wants. So I support it. I'd like to see a two lane uh, because I, I that, that traffic pattern that's there and the amount of impact that that would make in the community is something that the community doesn't want. And as a government, we're supposed to be by and for the people. And, and if the people are saying to us strongly, in that area that they don't want that because of the adverse impacts of a highway coming through their neighborhood. I think we're obligated to kind of listen to them and, and take that strongly into consideration. Um, let me begin by saying that I believe that good roads are obviously essential to our business community here. Um, in order to get goods and services to market, you need good roads to do that. Um, that being said, I do have concerns about this expansion. Um, I believe that it's not cost effective uh, under the current proposal. Um, Joe, I've also talked to a number of the residents in that area, and um, I've also heard their concerns on this issue as well. I'd like to see us go back and, and start talking about um, different places where we might be able to put this road um, and get back to the drawing board on it. Uh, I support the bypass, uh, although I also would support the referendum as I understand there are some opposition to it. This is something that's been vetted now for decades. Uh, they've done environmental impact studies. Uh, it's been voted on by the Common Council, by the Town Council. Um, it's time to move forward with this, and it's something that if we're, we truly envision growth here in Waukesha and in this district in particular, it's something we need to, to really move forward with, and I won't uh, pose it on the state level. I support the bypass. Uh, I have, uh, in understanding some of the concerns of members of uh, the community that are right around there, I do have some concerns that I would like to address in terms of safety traffic control issues as well as aesthetics. Uh, as many of you know, I'm in the real estate industry and I'm very sensitive to the impact uh, that uh, projects like this can have on home values. Uh, so I would want to work with community residents and the traffic engineers and designers of the, of the project to make sure that we uh, lighten that to the greatest extent possible. Uh, there will be an impact, of course, and uh, we know that. Um, sometimes uh, we have to concentrate on the greater good of the community, and I think the bypass does serve the greater good of the community. Yeah, likewise, I support the bypass. I believe that it's a jobs issue. When I've talked to folks that have businesses on Sunset or West, as I mentioned, Generac earlier, to have some accessible ways to get to the mainstream highway system to ship their product, uh, that's why I would support it. The routes and the details of that, I think that's a local issue that needs to be ironed out, and there's some controversy over that. But Somehow we have to find a way to get that in before more homes get built and it impacts more people. So I'm on the record as a supporting bypass. Great. Um, we're going to kind of do one last question here. And <coughs> what I want each of you to kind of just think about and share with us is, if you were elected, what would be your top three of priorities um, that you would take with you to Madison to probably work on first? Well, in closing, I think you've heard a lot of my um, issues relate to jobs, jobs, and jobs. Uh, there's underlying issues with those, like how can we have a lower tax burden in the Waukesha area? How can we help government get out of the way? Uh, how can government um, get out of the way in education so that parents have local control over their kids' education? But ultimately, um, if I were elected to go to Madison, I would want to find a way that uh, everything comes back to creating good jobs, because then Wisconsin becomes and Wisconsin becomes a great place to live, to work, and retire. My folks want to retire here to see their two-year-old granddaughter and another on the way, uh, but Wisconsin's expensive, high property taxes, income tax and sales tax, gas tax, we go on, and uh, the legislature's done some good things in the last few years, but I'd like to go a little further 
I've seen the $68 billion state budget. I carry it around sometimes, and it's heavy. There's a lot that can be uh, pulled out of there, uh, in my belief, and I think that can be given back to the taxpayers. As people have heard my plan for how we go about doing this, I've gained a lot of local support. Uh, County Sheriff Trewicki's endorsed me. Former Governor Thompson's endorsed me. Uh, Vice uh, Chairman of the County Board Walter Cole has endorsed me. A lot of folks that have heard my ideas believe in my private sector background and want to help me win, and I'd love to earn your vote along the way. So thanks for uh, hosting the forum this morning. Yeah, for the vast majority of my career, I have uh, paid self-employment tax, uh, which means I've been in business for myself for the vast majority of those years. Uh, I understand uh, what it's like to have to meet a payroll. I own my own business, and uh, I understand the needs and the importance of making sure we create a strong business climate here in Wisconsin. Uh, that is the singular issue on which I'm running. I mean, it, I've got it, other positions on issues, but I don't want to be distracted from the singular focus of making sure Wisconsin is open for business. That is the most important thing. We have uh, a number of challenges. We have a, a $700 million, nearly $700 million so-called sh shortfall in the transportation fund. And a lot of people want to know, well, how are we going to solve that? Well, we solve that by growing our economy. We solve a lot of our ills by growing our economy. So how do we grow our economy? Well, we have to communicate the message first and foremost that Wisconsin is open for business, which means we want business here. Whether it's a mining bill, or if it's uh, frac sand, or if it's any number of issues that relate to, do we want business in Wisconsin, or do we not? Is there a welcome mat there that says, come on business, we want you here? Because that's what we need to do. Secondly, taxes are a huge, huge impact on profit loans. And they're a huge influence in terms of where business is located. When we have among the highest tax, we are still among the highest tax states in the nation. If we don't sharpen our pencil and figure out more ways to, to reform government, to reduce our tax burden, well, we might as well just pick up that welcome mat and say, well, forget it, business, go locate someplace else. Uh, income taxes, for instance. Uh, there's a number of states, you look at some of the states that have had the booming economies over the last, even through the recession. Texas, for instance, has no income tax whatsoever. We can create a better climate here in Wisconsin for business. And, you know, some people say, well, but isn't that just all in favor of business? Well, where do you work? Do you have a job? Because if you have a job, you're probably working for a business. And that's paying your mortgage. And that's putting food on your table. This impacts everybody. So the economy is the singular most important issue, and there's all sorts of strategies and techniques for way, ways we can improve the business climate. Thank you. To answer your question, the top three things. Uh, number one is local control. Uh, to me, the, the majority of the work in this next role needs to be done here in the district. There's certainly things to be done in Madison. What's important is done right here, speaking with you and meeting with you. More decisions we can bring to local leaders um, who know what's best for their community, uh, the better off we're going to be. Number two is jobs. Um, my full-time job, I work with businesses, meet with businesses all the time. Uh, the last two years, I work for the digital ad agency at the Journal Sentinel, and we meet with people regarding marketing and advertising. So I see what, what their needs are, what they need, what they don't need, especially from government as well during our conversation. And places are hiring, and there's people that need work. And I, I uniquely see the role of this next assemblyman as being a lot more involved in that. There's certainly programs out there, but I think having leadership uh, be an active part of that role and connecting people that need work with people who are hiring is important. And number three is voter ID. I think voter ID is very important. I think it's a precedent setting. Uh, law that needs to continue forward. I think that's something that goes uh, to other states and it makes our elections accountable. Thank you again, uh, all of you, for being here this morning. It's good to see everybody. Um, I think that uh, when it comes to the issues that we all care about, I think that we're all fairly conservative in talking about some of the same principles, so I, I guess I'll go a bit in a different direction. Um, when talking about jobs and the economy, I think that one very underlooked aspect um, or part of our recovery program from the recession um, that we still have not totally recovered from. President Obama's leadership um, is going to be international trade. I think Wisconsin could do more uh, when it comes to increasing our ability to compete internationally. 
Um, there are markets that we're not even talking about yet. I think that um, Governor Walker has started this process by visiting China, by talking to India and Brazil, but we can do more. Um, I think that my background um, working overseas uh, has given me a unique insight into this issue. Um, I would be very supportive of our efforts to support international trade and to increase uh, our ability to export, bring jobs back here in Wisconsin. Uh, my three things, the first one is going to be a focus on, on Common Core and that education process that we need to employ. My second one is the only self-employed uh, person running for this office. I do understand uh, from a unique perspective all of the impacts that we are facing from health care, from taxation. Uh, I, I know what it's like to actually file an extension because my attorney says I need one. And the third thing is we have a $680 million shortfall in the road fund. We can hope for and, and work towards a expansion of revenue through growth. But we also, I know as a business owner, I can make the greatest plans. But some of that growth is outside of my control. I need to budget within my means. I think we need to look at the road construction process and understand what our needs are, what our desires are, and what we can afford. And somehow we have to find a middle ground. We cannot be, and I understand that the $680 million goes to the previous administration's robbing from that fund, but that's the position we're in, and we cannot ignore that. We have to work to address it because that's where we were left at where we are today. I think the top three things that I see going forward is the um, jobs, taxes, and small business, small and middle level business. Uh, the, the large GDs, the Alice Chalmers, they're, they're not around. Uh, what I see in the district is um, it is going to be those small business to middle level business that will get us out and moving into the, into the right direction. What I hear from them and what I would work towards, there's already a committee already set up in Madison, is, is to, to work with the legislators that are already there, get on that committee to continue for that committee to move forward, but to streamline it. Uh, when you start up a business, you got to go to this person, this this form, fill out this form, fill out this form. And we all know filling out the forms, because we've done this questionnaire, <laughs> is that that's money. Whenever you're going to another place or another department, it all costs money. So to really look at the small business and, and to streamline that process so that they can get an up, up and get their business going, uh, reducing the taxes. Sometimes it happens by just looking at the budget. The, uh, Brandon talked about the large budget he carries around. There are things in there we can eliminate. I find that even at the city level. Uh, this year, I, I eliminated this, uh, I reduced the cemetery's budget by $34,000. Those were in initiatives that I came up with. And I've done, I've brought in um, the private sector at the, uh, also with Johnson Controls coming to the city of Waukesha. We'll save well over several million dollars in the next 10 years. Uh, so sometimes it's not, look at what we're doing and how can we do it better. So it's taxes, jobs, and streamlining the process so businesses can get going. Because it all, it all, it all, when we're all working, we're all happy. So uh, it, uh, it has affected in the last several years. Uh, I've seen it within my own family, how jobs are lost, jobs are gotten, and um, we have to have the jobs in order for it Wisconsin to continue to grow. So we have to be open for business. Thank you. Well, I do appreciate all the candidates coming today um, and sharing a little bit about yourself, a little bit about what you're looking to do to win the vote from the electorate. Um, we know the election's coming up very soon, um, the, and, this, and this is the primary election on August 12th. So we do encourage people to get out there and vote. Um, if people do have further questions, I'm sure the candidates will be here for a few more minutes. Um, and feel free to just kind of mix and mingle. And again, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for